blokes with their big names and their big raps and their big money and big names again like O'Grady, McEwen and so on. <laughs> Couldn't. They lost and you won. What do you think was the difference? <laughs> We're women. Oh, there you go. There we go. <laughs> and uh, look, it was a tremendous ride. And I was just going to say, um, at the end there, obviously you, you felt as though you could take the second place getter coming up that final bit and obviously pulled out and she didn't have much left when you went for it. Yeah, I actually expected her to put up a bit more of a fight, but um, when I went, she had nothing and... Uh... It was a fantastic result, and I've got to say, her instant reaction was to look around and see if she'd hang on for second as opposed to going to third. It was just a fantastic result. Now, uh, look, uh, can I just say, you've been spotted by the AIS Talent Identification Program to push on in the cycling. What's the process there? Of Because uh, there's no evidence in your family that you'd be good at bike riding. No. <laughs> um, yeah, we just did a few um, vertical jump tests which I wasn't so good at. Yes. So they said you better ride. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be as simple as that, can it? Just jumping up and down on the spot. And we also ran up and down the uh, basketball court. <laughs> it can't be that simple. It can't be that scientific either, can it, Roy? Well, it's, it strikes me as an excellent idea if it works so successful. You know, I, mean, I, I think that's great. You run up and down a basketball course, next thing you know, you're winning gold in cycling. I mean, it's brilliant. <laughs> and tune to beeps as well. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. OK. Now, you, the course, I, I, was, I was speaking to the, uh, a lot of the blokes uh, after, the, uh, after their particular race. They said the course was deceptive that it was really quite a difficult course. How did you find it? Yeah, it was quite a challenging course. Yes. Because um, there, there's a, uh, one of the hills there that don't look much. No, that's right. But uh, after a few laps around, it certainly takes its toll. And uh, No, no, well, you now, did now better you, than anybody else. You <laughs> sat on the shoulder of uh, uh, Judith Arndt for, for a fair amount of the way. W hmm? Were you talking to her at all? Were you saying anything? Like, I'm here, I'm still here, I'm still here. <laughs> You're getting buggered, you're getting tired. <laughs> was there any communication at all in that way? Just me sitting there silently was enough, I was think. Was enough? Yeah. Well, she, she seemed to be, well, she would have been constantly aware of you. She was always looking around, and mm -hmm. that must be off-putting. So, so it's al almost more difficult to lead the race, isn't it, than to be just behind? Well, you, actually, you save 30% of your energy when you sit behind somebody. Because of the slipstream? Yeah, yeah, and especially, too, yesterday, because it was quite windy. Yes, so, well, I was going to ask whether the wind had much of an effect. Yeah. Well, why didn't she just hit the brake, put you in front, and get behind you? <laughs> Tactical. Duh. <laughs> Is it considered when you get in a breakaway like that that you're meant to work for each other? or? No, well, see, that's where it worked really well with the Australians yesterday. Uh, the team worked you know, perfectly together. And, um, Unlike the blokes again. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, I have to stick up for them there. They did an awesome job together as well. But, um, yeah, yeah, we had a Noni Wood back in the group behind us, and she's an awesome sprinter, so uh, Judith knew that, and uh, that was her chance, really, to either go for it or, or, or sit up. So she knew that I was only going to sit in behind her, and uh, if, if it came back, then we knew then that a Noni was going to take it in the sprint. So. Now, your mum and dad were on course, and that apparently it, there were, there were, uh, in their pit there were not many people around them, and that you, could, you could hear them quite clearly on every lap. <laughs> Pretty rare through. Yeah, I think Dad had a few uh, beers in his hand. And <laughs> yeah, that can't be right. <laughs> he had his cowboy hat hanging out the side. And have they seen you race at such a level? Obviously not an Olympic level, but in big races before? Well, actually, they saw me win the World Cup last year in Geelong in Australia. And uh, up until, yeah, that was a special moment to have them there as well and to have them here. It's absolutely, yeah, yeah it's unbelievable. Oh, that's fantastic. Sarah, were you aware of how much you had left in the tank and how little? Your German opponent had it left in the tank with that last 100 yeah, metres. Can you read what the opposition's doing? <laughs> well, <laughs> Judith is uh, she's quite deceptive. When you watch her ride, yes. she might not have much left in the tank, but yes. it was always looking really strong. Yes. Um, so I didn't realise that, no, she didn't. She had nothing left. Yeah. Nothing at all. <laughs> and you looked as if you could have bloody driven through, ridden through a brick wall. I mean, you, you had an enormous amount left. Roy was going to erect one there just to see just if he could. Just to see <laughs> Sadly, he couldn't find bricks. All he could find was rocks and smashed plates. <laughs> I'm pleased he didn't. I was quite happy to cross the line. Right. <laughs> now, uh, one thing is, uh, I understand you're, you're keen on uh, go-karting as a hobby, uh, driving around at speed. Is there, is there any comparison between the, uh, the two um, disciplines? Um, well, I mean, we hit up to 
at least 60k an hour down some of those hills yesterday. I mean, I do love a bit of speed. Yes. Um, the next question is, do you drive the car fast? <laughs> yes, my dad's always uh, oh, on to slow you up. in the passenger seat. Oh, you know. Yeah. Now, the technology in bike, uh, you know, is it a fairly even, you know, obviously uh, some nations are disadvantaged because they don't have the money to spend on sport and or, you know, disinclined to spend money on sport. Is the technology even across the field on a, on a race like yesterday or do some people have much better bikes than others? Well, I think, um, no, it's fairly, fairly even because um, a lot of the, the countries that were there um, are the top countries in yeah. the world and they have the, the technology there. But, I mean, with our Trek bikes... Um, yeah, we've got new bikes just before the Olympics and it was in the Australian colours, which yes. was really special for us this yes. year. Yeah. And what happens now, uh, you've got another race that you're, you're able to compete and I'm not sure whether you're going to do that. Uh, what's, what's the program ahead for you here at the Olympics? Well, um, Anoni's actually doing the time trial, which is on Wednesday. Um, so I've finished here for the, the Olympics. Um, but we're travelling to France on the 28th to do a World Cup. Anoni's le leading it at the moment. so. We're going to head there and keep the momentum going and hopefully win another one and keep her in the lead leader's jersey. Good on you, Roy. No, it's, fant it's, it's fantastic. Now, obviously, you went to the Irish pub last night with Mum and Dad and a few of the other riders. What's the plan now? To see a bit of Athens and then scoot or stay in the village and uh, add a bit of support to the rest of the team? Well, yeah, we stay in the hotel until Anoni finishes the time trial on Wednesday and then we yep. all, all head together, the three of us, um, to the village for a few days and then we head out to France after that. Fantastic. And the world title, uh, you know, would you, would you see yourself now as warm favourite to hold that again? Oh, well, I've actually decided to go back home. Oh, look. <laughs> Two weeks previously, I, just, I thought, I mean, I've been doing, um, well, five years now from March to yeah. October overseas and I yeah. decided I might have a, the rest of the year off. Well, we wish you all the very best with that. And, of course, no one goes away from the show empty-handed. And we'd like to, you to accept this marvellous uh, souvenir of your time with us here today. Uh, obviously, it's the Dream Shovel, the Dream in Athens <laughs> Shovel, to indicate that people should get out and dig about and see what they can find. And uh, uh, that is a terrific souvenir of the uh, Dream yep. in Athens. And, Roy? Yes, you've got the Golden Shovel uh, Sorbent Extra Strength. <laughs> Paper in the six roll pack. Uh, six roll pack, so you enjoy that. I will indeed. Thank you. <laughs> and can I ask everybody here or at home to stand up and thank gold medalist? <laughs>